Life on Turkey Lane. I'm so glad you're here with me tonight. This is kind of a, uh, my kitchen is a wreck. I just got back from Walmart. I had to grab up some things. Um, but tonight is gonna be kind of like a freezer meal cooking night. Um, my sister-in-law broke her leg um, a little over a week ago and she's kind of the only one who knows how to cook in their home. So uh, I know they've had a neighbor and another family member bring them a few groceries and different things that were easy for them to heat up and stuff. But I thought, you know, being her sister-in-law, um, I probably should make some freezer meals for her, something that they could just pop in the oven and um, have something good to eat that uh, her husband can do for them. I'll, I'll make sure that I put cooking instructions um, on them. And that way, because she's not able to really walk or anything like that, obviously. So, um, and so I thought I'd just bring you along. I've already got some things started. Um, one of the dishes that we are going to make is um, um, like jumbo shell noodles with filling and marinara sauce. I, uh, I bought some, um, so I've got the noodles on to boil here. I've got the meat thawing in the sink. Um, but it's just the two of them, so I bought these little pans. Now, Dollar Tree used to have some pans that have like lids on top, but I could not find any of those. So I just got these little like eight by eight cake pans and I will cover them with aluminum foil. But I think one pan filled with food should feed the both of them for a night and maybe even have enough leftovers for one of them to have a lunch or something the next day. So I'm making a few like casseroles up. I'm making like um, a broccoli, uh, cheese and chicken casserole with uh, cauliflower rice. Uh, my sister-in-law, is she's not necessarily gluten-free, but she doesn't eat a lot of rice and a lot of pastas. So I'm trying to limit those. Um, but anyway, I've got that in this pan here with, I've got um, cauliflower rice, broccoli florets, um, chicken pieces, and a little bit of uh, Velveeta cheese melting. And then I will add some uh, mushroom soup to it. Um, and I should probably chop a little bit of onion and put that in there. So let me get to doing that. You know what? I think I know what would be a little better and they'll uh, soften up in the liquid just a little bit. And that is some minced onion. I think I'm gonna get some of that and sprinkle in there. Okay, so I've got some chopped onion and I'm just gonna sprinkle that in there. Let me get a pot holder so I don't burn myself. Oh yeah, this is looking nice. I know both my sister-in-law and brother-in-law like onions, so this is looking nice. That cheese is getting melty. Just a little bit of salt and pepper in there. And a little bit of garlic powder. Okay, now this should be ready to add my mushroom soup to. Make sure I stir that cheese up and get it all nice and incorporated. And now I'm going to add some mushroom soup. Close to the whole can. This is a small batch, so probably not all of it. And then I need to add a splash of milk. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and add some half and half. Just about a quarter of a cup or so. Stir that up good. And the reason that looks bubbly is because I shook it up some, so there's nothing wrong with it. Whoops, I'm making a mess everywhere. But this is coming together nicely. So uh, I'm gonna get this in one of those pans because it's just about ready. This is plenty enough for two people and to have some leftovers. And like I said, this is something that my sister-in-law can do pretty good. 
because um, uh, she can have the cauliflower rice and it won't uh, hurt her. So, hey, there we go. One casserole done. I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of cheese on top, make it extra yummy, yummy. Uh, just a little bit. Just to make it pretty. Okay, and when this is cooled down, uh, I'm going to stick some aluminum foil on top of it, and it'll be ready for the freezer. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and make some tamale casserole. I've got a large can of the tamales and beef that I bought from Walmart, and I think that, of course, this one large can is going to be plenty enough to feed them. So I'm going to drain these tamales. Anyway, I'm just going to take these tamales and I'm going to layer them in the pan. Um, I will go ahead and post the, it was actually just recently that, that I did the video with the tamale casserole. And uh, somebody in the comments says that she puts a Jiffy Cornbread Mix on top of hers and bakes it in the oven that way. Now I have heard of that and I've never done that. Um, but I think I might do that for this one. I'm thinking of making it a little extra hearty and um, a little more filling that way. And I think they'll enjoy that. So yes, this one pan of tamales completely filled this pan. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put my chili on top. Okay, and this is chili with beans and I'm just gonna pour that over the top. Okay, and I'm just gonna use this Jiffy uh, cornbread mix. I think it was reduced to 52 or 58 cents at Walmart for one box, and I'm just gonna mix it to package directions. You put one egg and a third cup of milk uh, with this mix in there and mix it up, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that's mixed up real good. You don't want any dry cornbread mix in there, and I'm just gonna pour it on the top. I'm just going to make sure it covers the whole top. So this will kind of be like a, almost like a crust on top of it, which I think will be delicious. Now I think I'm going to sprinkle with just a little bit of cheese on this one too, because you can't never have enough cheese in my opinion. Although I do go pretty sparing on it because I'm not, I mean, I'm a fan of cheese, but I'm not like crazy, crazy about it. So. I just think a little bit will make it a little bit creamier, taste a little bit better, and look a little bit prettier. So there we go. So that looks really good. So we've got two casseroles out of the way. I'm gonna probably do up a little bit of these dishes, and then we'll start on the other two casseroles. Okay guys, so those jumbo shell noodles are cooked, they're done, I've let them cool off. In the meantime, I have browned a pound of ground beef and I've seasoned it up. So we're gonna make the filling to go in our shells. So uh, let's look and see what we have. Okay, so I've got my bowl here. I'm gonna pour my ground beef in here. So one pound of ground beef goes in. got some ricotta cheese and this is a uh, 15 ounce container so that's going to go in there. Okay and now I've got some spinach and now you can use frozen spinach that's been thawed and drained or I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of this fresh spinach and you don't need a whole lot. Now I am going to take it, it might take a few minutes, but I am going to take the pieces and take the stems off of them because we don't want to eat stems. Uh, they don't want to eat stems, I should say. I won't be eating this, but um, we want it to be pleasant. We don't want it to have all these stems and stuff. Um, but anyway, you don't need a lot of this. You just need um, just enough that 
Uh, you got just a bit of vegetables in this filling. I think that large handful is plenty enough. And so now I'm just gonna mix all this together. And I think I'm gonna go ahead, even though I season the ground beef, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of Italian spices in this. And some dried oregano and some basil and things like that. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of each one of those in. So I've got some basil here. And I'm gonna put just a little bit more of that oregano. And I think that should be good. And um, I might sprinkle just a little bit of Parmesan cheese in here. So let's get these noodles over here. Okay, I'm gonna get these noodles and I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff them one at a time. They're cooled off and as you can see, they kind of open up here. And I'm just gonna put some filling in each one. Before I do that though, I'm gonna take this jar of sauce and I'm gonna go ahead and be nice and um, share one of my home canned um, spaghetti sauces with her. I hope they don't mind, of course, you know, because you watched me do it. Um, in a video, I made the pasta sauce and I didn't take the seeds out of the tomatoes or anything like that. They were skinned, de-skinned, de but they weren't de-seeded. So, um, hopefully they won't mind that. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to spread a little bit of this sauce in the bottom of my pan here. Just a little bit, so the spread it around. So the shells kind of don't stick to the pan. And I probably I never even thought I should have greased these little pans. I don't make a whole lot of freezer meals in general. And I probably should have sprayed the pans. But anyway, I'm just going to take that filling in there. I'm just going to take a spoon and I'm going to get some of that filling and stuff each one of these little shells with some filling and I'm just gonna layer them in there. I better go let the dog in, she's wanting in. And you can stuff these as full or as light as you want. And I'm just gonna fill up this casserole pan. Okay, I'm gonna let you get a good look at those. They're stuffed and now I'm just gonna pour the rest of my sauce on the top. And just kind of smother them with the sauce. I'm going to go ahead and finish and use the whole jar. That's the nice thing about these pint jars is they're just enough. You know, you don't have excess that, that you have to put in the refrigerator or anything like that. They're just plenty enough for a couple people for a meal. So, and it's good stuff, good stuff. At least I hope they think it's good. I think it's good. My husband thinks it's delicious. Andy and I love my sauce. You know, you can see the seeds in it, and hopefully that's not a distraction and that they like it as much as we do. Um, but uh, you have to be really special to earn some of my sauce, though. So I'm hoping they like it. And now I'm just sprinkling. I'm, I'm putting some Parmesan cheese on top. Okay, and that's another dish that's ready for the freezer. So I'm going to get this stuff out of the way, and we're going to make the last one for tonight, which is one of my family's favorites. So, and that is not going to require any cooking, so it will be easy to put together. So I'm just going to put these, this stuff away for right now. So there we go. That's one more casserole down. And now this one... Um, let me uh, get a bowl real quick. Okay, guys, this next recipe is, like I said, it's one of my family favorites. I've been making it for years. Of course, ours is a on a little bit larger scale because we have four people that I normally feed with it. Um, when I was, well, when my daughter was here, we had four people. Um, but it calls for a half a stick of melted butter. And so I'm going to go ahead and get that 
in my bowl here and throw it in the microwave and uh, get that all melted. And uh, like I said, it's called chicken bake and it's real simple. It's just a couple ingredients. And um, now normally when I make it, I don't stick it in the freezer. I go ahead and throw it in a 350 degree oven and let it bake until the chicken tenders are done. Um, but basically it's a box of stuffing, some chicken tenders, and um, and you make the, the stuffing you'll make to uh, the box directions um, with your water and butter and whatever. Um, some chicken tenders and some mushroom soup with a little bit of milk and um, it's good to go and it's super delicious, I promise you that. So I'm gonna melt this butter. Okay, my butter is somewhat melted. Yeah, that's good enough. Just as long as it's soft enough, I can mix it in with that uh, stuffing mix. So, so I'm gonna throw my stuffing mix in there and then I'm gonna need a cup and a half of um, warm water. Let me get my cup and a half of warm water here. That's about it. So, and if you'll notice uh, canning jars, if you, if you don't have your measuring cup handy or whatever, um, canning jars do have measurements on the side, which are very helpful. And so anyway, I'm just going to put that in there, just like the package directions, and I'm going to let this breadcrumbs soak up that water until they're nice and tender. And let me get my mushroom soup. Okay, while that is uh, soaking up that water, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my can of cream of mushroom soup. You can use cream of chicken soup, cream of celery soup. Um, whatever you have on hand there. And I'm just gonna put that in my uh, little measuring cup here. And then I'm gonna do, use about a half a can of milk. Maybe just a little less than a half a can of milk. And I'm just gonna pour that in there and get that mixed up. And that's the gravy to go on top. So, okay, so I'm gonna fluff my stuffing mix here. And I think just because I thought about it, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this pan. I should have sprayed the other pans, but. That way the, the stuffing doesn't stick to it. And uh, they won't have a problem with it. And I'm just going to spread that dressing, that stuffing, right on the bottom of the pan here. Okay, now I'm going to take my, um, and I won't use this whole package of chicken. Anyway, I've got these chicken tenders here, and I like to use chicken tenders instead of chicken breasts because they're a little bit smaller, a little more bite size. And I'm just going to spread them on top of here until I've covered the whole casserole with them. Let's see, let's see if I can get some decent ones. Now I'm telling you, chicken tenders are expensive. Um, normally, I would probably go ahead and just... Uh, buy chicken breasts and cut them up, but uh, I didn't really want to take the time to do that. But I'm just going to spread enough of these on here to fill up the whole pan. And um, this will be plenty for the both of them. 
like I said, this will be plenty for both of them and they'll have leftovers even. So um, that way they have, you know, for lunch the next day or something. Uh, let me get my little scraper thing here. And the last thing for this casserole is just our, I call it mushroom gravy, but it's, you know, mushroom soup with a little bit of milk. And I'm just going to pour it on top there. There we go. Uh, let me show you. Uh, we've got four little casseroles for them. And they're all a little bit different, so I think they'll enjoy them. So anyway, like I was saying, I have four little casseroles made for them. We have the broccoli with cauliflower rice chicken casserole. We have um, tamale casserole with the cornbread on top. Um, we have these stuffed shells um, with my homemade uh, pasta sauce. And then we have the chicken bake with the chicken and stuffing. And um, like I was saying, that one, when that chicken bakes and it goes down in that stuffing mix, the, the juices from that chicken and stuff and that, um, that mushroom gravy on top gets nice and, you know, bubbly. It is delicious. This is, like I said, this is pretty much a family. It is a family favorite for sure. So um, it's just stuffing mix with your chicken tenders on top and the mushroom and milk on top. And you bake it in the oven until those chicken tenders are done and cook through. And it is delicious, guys. So if you don't try anything else in your life, try that. I mean, that's kind of, truthfully, if you want to get technical about it, other than the fact that it has chicken, um, if you didn't feel like cooking a whole turkey for Thanksgiving because you don't have a big family or, um, you know, maybe you don't have the funds for the turkey or whatever, make this. I mean, that's like, uh, that's almost like Thanksgiving dinner in a pan. So anyway, there's the four casseroles. Um, I'm going to wrap those up in some aluminum foil and put the cooking instructions on them. And then um, those will be done. I'll be back in the morning and we're going to make uh, maybe a few breakfast items and some cold salads to go in the refrigerator. So I'll be back and I'll see you then. Okay, guys. So it is morning um, the next day. And today I'm going to go ahead and make some a salad of refrigerator salads um, that she can pull from during the week for um, you know lunches or to go as a side with some of the meals that we made up last night and I'm gonna start by chopping all my vegetables before I make the sauces and different things that go on them so but the first one that I want to do is um, the coleslaw she loves coleslaw um, however, she does have a condition where she doesn't digest it very well. So what I'm going to do is how I make it for us. And I'm going to take your regular just coleslaw mix here. And that I got from the store a little over a dollar. I can't remember. This was from Walmart, probably $2 and something. Because um, most of the time I like to get my groceries at all these things like this. So, but anyway, a tip for you, if you are buying coleslaw mix in the store... Try to get a package that looks like it's almost like it's um, shrink wrapped because your vegetables in there will be a lot fresher um, and, you know, and take less chance of being, being um, shriveled up and kind of yucky. So anyway, that's just a tip. Pick, pick a bag where it looks like it's shrink wrapped. A lot of people avoid those because they think, oh, that's kind of weird but this is how you want to get it. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my little mini chopper, which I've told you before is one of my very favorite kitchen gadgets. And I'm just going to run a little bit at a time through there until I get the amount that I want done and until it's chopped up um, almost like um, KFC's coleslaw. It's, you know, theirs is chopped pretty fine. And that's how we like ours. And so that's what I do with this bag coleslaw mix is I chop it. So um, we're going to put just a little bit, handful or two in the little mini chopper at a time. Okay. 
Now, as usual, this is going to make a little bit of a noise, and that's okay. I got a little piece of cabbage down there. And I'm just going to pulse it a couple times. Okay, and just by just by pulsing it a few times in there, I get a nice chop on that coleslaw. Okay, so I'm gonna finish uh, chopping this um, cabbage mix up. And, um, and then um, we're also gonna make a broccoli salad, which I know she likes as well. And I'm gonna make sure to chop the pieces of broccoli fairly small as well. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish chopping this cabbage up. Okay, for just a little added yumminess to this coleslaw mix, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up um, a piece of onion. Not very much, it's just for a little added flavor and goodness to the um, slaw mixture. So I'm gonna pulse that in here real quick. And like I said, it's not very much, it's just enough to add some flavor to this, so. I'm just going to put that right here in my bowl. And there we go. We've got some nice coleslaw mix. Okay. We've got our uh, coleslaw mix chopped, and it's looking really good. So I'm going to set it aside, and um, then uh, we're going to get started chopping our broccoli and all that. Or actually, maybe... I might go ahead and start making the dressing for this because if it sits out, it might start getting a little watery and I don't think I want it to do that. Okay, so just basic ingredients for, you know, some people will buy the, the coleslaw dressing at the store in a bottle and that's perfectly fine. I don't really love that stuff. Um, but if that's what you want to use, you're more than welcome to do that, of course. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and make my own. And one of the reasons is, is because, um, you know, usually when I make coleslaw, I use Splenda as the sweetener in the dressing because my daughter and I are diabetic. Well, my sister-in-law is also diabetic. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the Splenda as a sweetener in this. So that's one reason why I go ahead and make my own dressing. Um, but of course you can do you and I'm going to take probably about a half to three quarters cup of mayonnaise, just the regular old cheap mayonnaise. Um, I bought a fresh jar last night and just a little splash of lemon juice. And normally I like to use real lemon, but I don't have any of that and I did not buy one. And then a little splash of milk. And then a little bit of the um, Splenda. And I'm talking only a teaspoon or so of the Splenda, not much at all. And then, of course, we'll give this a taste before we um, put it in our salad. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle in a little bit of salt and pepper. And just a little dash of garlic powder. And I'm going to... Get a fork and whisk that all together here. Make sure we have enough. Make sure it's whipped together where it's all nice and creamy, it's not lumpy. Okay, I'm gonna give it a taste. That's actually pretty good coleslaw salad right here, dressing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on top of my, I think there's enough. I've got a little, about a cup or so here. I'm gonna go ahead and dress my coleslaw here. And like I said, I'll go ahead and post the recipe for my dressings and stuff 
in the description box because you might have a relative or somebody or a friend that is diabetic who can't have the sugar and stuff in that's in regular coleslaws or coleslaws that you get out. So um, I just want to give you an idea. And this is really good dressing. It's not bad tasting at all. So um, this is just an idea for you that you can make your coleslaw dressing sugar-free. And um, it's really tasty. Okay, this is some really good looking coleslaw and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste test. That's good. Okay. So I'm gonna get this in a container. Got one little piece of that purple slaw that didn't shred up. So I'm gonna pick, pull that out of there. Okay, I'm gonna get this in a container. I bought a few disposable containers. I didn't have the ones at Dollar Tree that I normally buy that are a little bit bigger, but we're just gonna to have to try to pack as much as we can in the smaller ones I found. Okay, so I found these Sure Fresh. You get three of them in a package for $1.25. Normally I like to buy, they're like a cylinder shaped one and they hold quite a bit of food. Um, but my Dollar Tree here was out of those, so we're just going to have to use these. But I think they'll be okay, and I'm just going to pack as much in there as I can. And any leftover, I might have for lunch. You know what? I think this container is going to hold all this. So that's nice. Yep, it sure will. So we're good to go there. So there we go. That's one full container of coleslaw. I'm going to go ahead and get that in the fridge and let it be chilling. And now I am going to get out the ingredients that I need for my broccoli uh, salad. Hey guys, to chop all of these vegetables, I'm just going to go ahead and do it here at the kitchen table. And uh, I'm going to start with the broccoli salad because the vegetables are a little less messy. Um, I'm also going to be making kind of like a summer salad type, but it's got uh, chickpeas and tomatoes and cucumber in it also. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that after I get the broccoli salad done. Now, normally broccoli salad calls for a purple onion or red onion. Walmart was completely out last night. So I don't have red onion. We're gonna use plain white and just hope it works out. So. We don't need a whole lot of it anyway, so I'm going to chop, oh, probably about half of this onion into little bitty, you know, I'm going to dice it up pretty fine because um, I don't think anybody loves like a big giant bite of onion, uh, raw onion. So I'm going to dice this up pretty fine and I'm going to go ahead and make the broccoli, put, uh, cut them up in small. Uh, little florets because um, like I said she has a little bit of troubles um, digesting some of those things so the cruciferous vegetables especially so um, I want to make sure that it's at a place that she can you know eat it comfortably I do have about a quarter to a half cup maybe a third cup here of um, dried cranberries I'm going to put in the broccoli salad here now these were dried and I went ahead and soaked them just a little bit to kind of make them a little softer and juicier. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there. Like I said, it's maybe about a third cup of that. And then we're gonna get some of this uh, broccoli chopped up. And I'm only gonna make enough, like you, you saw the little containers, I'm only gonna make enough to fit in like that little container there. And of course I just dropped some broccoli on the floor. But like I said, I'm going to cut my bro broccoli in small pieces. Um, now, you guys did meet my sister-in-law if you watched the swap meet video. Um, you met her briefly there. So this is the person, that's the person I'm making these items for. And her husband, you didn't meet him on video, but you did meet her. So I'm making these items for them. 
so that while she's recuperating and can't be on her leg or you know move around a whole lot that they have something homemade that's good to eat that they will enjoy and will I just want to help them out some. So, and um, after I get these salads done in the refrigerator this morning, I'm going to go ahead and make some breakfast burritos. I know the last time I talked to her, she told me one of the biggest um, issues she was having, she is didn't have anything real easy at home for breakfast that she likes. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and make some breakfast burritos and we'll put those in the freezer and wrap them individually. And uh, we will put those in the freezer when we get to her house. Should have brought me a scrap bowl over, but maybe I'll use this bag if that will work. Okay, and then that's pretty much the chopping for the broccoli. And I've got some real bacon bits here. Um, I didn't fry up any of my own bacon, but these will work just fine. Gonna sprinkle about a you know fourth cup or a little more of that in there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some cheese in there. And I don't want to put a ton of cheese because cheese will break down and get kind of soggy. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of that in there, maybe about a fourth cup or so. And then now that should be ready for our dressing here in just a few minutes. So I'm going to set that to the side and, um, and then we'll get started on the other uh, salad here. Now this salad does call for a can of drained and rinsed uh, chickpeas. So I'll do that last, but I'm going to go ahead and chop the vegetables. And I've got um, an English cucumber here and um, some tomatoes out of our garden. These are a few that we have left. And, um, and then also a little bit of onion. I've just got a little bit left, so I think that'll be fine. And um, so anyway, we should be good to go here. And I'm not gonna be making a huge batch of this because like I said, we only have the space in our little bowl. So I'm gonna chop that little piece of onion I had left over here and probably maybe about a half of this English cucumber. Okay, so I'm just gonna dice this English cucumber in about half inch dices. And you know what, I probably should have peeled this first, but I'm not going to. Um, the one thing that I do like about English cucumbers and the reason why I use them a lot is because um, they're, they're not real seedy. They don't have big seeds in them that are distasteful or that you have to remove. And the skin on them is nice and um, kind of light. It's not tough like some of your other cucumber skins. So I don't mind at all using the, the English cucumbers with the, the skin on it chop a few of these nice romas. I like to kind of use, now you can use grape tomatoes in the salad or whatever tomatoes you like. I kind of like to use romas because they're a little bit uh, meatier and they don't have uh, a lot of the seeds in them. And again, I'm just gonna kind of do a dice on those. We're uh, about to finish up these salads, really. Don't take very long at all to put these together. Now this salad does not have a creamy base to it. It has a, um, kind of like, uh, I use a mixture of Italian salad dressing and French salad dressing. So it's, uh, it's kind of like a sweet and tart um, dressing to it and it's easy to put together, so. Okay, I'm thinking that should probably be enough. I don't want to go overboard here. Put that back in the bag. Okay, so uh, I think we're ready to get our salad dressings going here. I'm gonna drain and rinse some chickpeas and get that uh, going, and then we'll finish putting these salads together. Okay, so 
we're gonna go ahead and get the salad with the garbanzo beans out of the way first because the dressing for it is super easy. It's, you can't mess it up. Okay, so I went ahead and I bought a new bottle of French's dressing last night because I knew I didn't have very much left in this one. Um, but I think I have plenty of Italian dressing here. And now I don't normally measure this out, but you use about a fourth to a third cup of each in your salad. So, so like I said, I'm not measuring it out. I'm just going to toss some in there. Now this French's does have... Um, sugar in it. I'm sure probably the Italian does too. I've got the wishbone light Italian there. Um, but I'm sure it probably does have some sugar, but I'm not using a lot of it. So, and man, am I making a mess today? My goodness. Before I can even take this stuff down to her, I'm going to have to do a cleaning and put just a little bit more Italian Now I'm going to go ahead and give this a taste test and see what I think of it. I think that's pretty good. So I had enough of the French dressing after all, but that's okay because it doesn't hurt to keep that in your pantry. Now this salad is ready to go in one of these bowls. And now you could, if you wanted to give it a little bit more of a, like an Italian flavor, you could put some, a little bit of basil, dried or um, fresh in there. That would be real good. Um, but I'm just going to keep it simple. I almost feel like I didn't make enough, but I think for her, I think that'd be okay. So I've got a little bowl of that salad there. Okay, so I'm going to get that in the fridge, and so that one's done. Okay, so now I'm going to make the, the dressing for my broccoli salad, and it's basically the same as the coleslaw salad, but I add one extra ingredient to it. So I'm going to get probably, again, about a third to a half cup of mayonnaise in here, a little splash of the lemon juice. A little splash of milk. Not much at all. So a dash of salt and pepper. Not a whole lot of salt. Um, but you need a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put just a little dash of the garlic powder. Just because I like that. And then there's a secret ingredient I'm going to put in this. So let me get that secret ingredient ready and I will tell you what it is. Um, and while I'm getting the secret ingredient ready, the one thing I forgot to put in this is the, um, the splenda. So again, just about a teaspoon or so, a heaping teaspoon. There we go. I'll give that a stir. Okay, now I know this is going to sound weird, but a good friend of mine taught me this years and years and years ago, and it does make the best broccoli salad you'll ever have, and that is to put about a tablespoon of bacon grease in your salad. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put that, make sure it's cool enough, it's not warm. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my dressing and mix that in there again. This a little taste. That's good. Okay, we're going to get this into our salad and get it stirred up. Let me find my little scraper. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get that in my bowl here and get that all mixed together. Okay, we're just going to 
stir this up. Okay, that's looking good, guys. So I think we're, we've got the salads going. So I'm gonna give this one a taste test. Doesn't that look good? I love broccoli salad. Um, this is probably my favorite way to eat broccoli. Of course, I like broccoli just about any way you can have it, but let me get a little taste here. Mmm. That is good. And the more this dressing sits and coats that, mmm. Mmm. I love this, guys. Love it. If I was a stingy person, I'd keep it for myself. I'm going to go ahead and get this in the bowl. perfect amount for this little bowl here okay so um, I'm gonna get this mess cleaned up and we're gonna get started on the uh, the breakfast burritos those shouldn't take long they're gonna be nice and easy So there we go, there's the broccoli salad. Like I said, I might put them in nice disposable containers so when they're finished, if they wanna wash these out and keep them, they can, but these are throwaway, so they don't have to try to worry about giving them back to me or anything like that. Okay, while well, the sausage and peppers are, and onions are cooking over there, I'm gonna go ahead and crack about 10 eggs. So hopefully we'll have enough filling or not have too much and we'll get about one egg per shell. Okay, and I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of half and half to this egg. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or so of half and half to this. And a little bit creamier and fluffier. And then they're ready to add to our pan. And okay, we're gonna add this eggs to our pan here. Go ahead and stir that up. Okay guys, so our filling for the breakfast burritos are done. I'm gonna let this filling cool down just a little bit and, um, and then I'll be back when it's time to assemble these breakfast burritos. So let's get these breakfast burritos assembled. Now I found these uh, Pull up parchment papers from Dollar Tree. They were a little long, so I went ahead and cut them down to where they're about a square size. And then I've got these uh, flour tortillas from Walmart, and then our egg mixture and cheese. So I'm just gonna kinda try to do this here real quick. I do wanna get going, it's afternoon already, and um, I wanna get on the road here soon because uh, they live about an hour and a half away from me. So I'm gonna get this done and uh, get them to them. So I'm just gonna put just a little bit of filling down the center of my burritos here, wraps. Sprinkle a little bit of cheese. And believe me, these will probably have more filling in them than McDonald's has in a lot of those. So um, should be nice and yummy. And now I'm gonna go ahead and tuck in both ends and uh, do it that way. And I'm gonna make me a stack of them and then I will wrap them in our papers. So I'm just gonna do all of them that way. It shouldn't take me long at all. Wanted to make sure I didn't overcook my egg mixture because then you get chewy sorts of eggs and we don't want chewy eggs. All right, 
I'm gonna finish assembling these and get them all put together. And then um, when I load stuff in a box to take, well, I'll kind of maybe hopefully give you a peek of everything we have. And, um, and then we'll get this down to her house. Okay guys, so I have all of my burritos assembled here and I'm gonna wrap them up individually. Now I'm gonna place them on the paper where there's like a triangle. I'm gonna fold both sides in. I'm gonna fold one end over. And uh, they go just like that. And it's wrapped perfectly. And then I'm gonna stick them all in a freezer bag when I'm done. Okay guys, we officially have 10 breakfast burritos, probably better than McDonald's for not much money, and yeah, it was quick and easy to do. Um, I plan on doing this for myself this winter. Um, I don't go through the drive throughs or anything anymore, but I sure do like to have a convenient breakfast. So this would make things nice and convenient. Um, you would just pull one out of your freezer bag and um, heat it in the microwave for uh, a minute or so and you're good to go. Okay guys, so I've got 10 breakfast burritos packed and ready to go. So I'm gonna start loading this stuff up and I'll show you what we have. Okay guys, ah, I am tired. Okay, so what all do we have? Um, now I have some egg bites in the freezer that need to be used up and so I think that um, she can use these. These don't have a, t a tortilla shell around them or anything. They're just eggs that I've made in the muffin tin that have a little bit of bacon and um, probably peppers and onions in them or something like that. And so I'm gonna take those to her. There's plenty there. We've got our breakfast burritos. We've got our three vegetable salads. We've got our four casseroles. And then I had in the freezer already, um, anytime we cook soup or beans or chilies or anything, um, the leftovers usually go in the freezer for another meal at another time. And so I've got the taco soup that Andy made yesterday. I froze a big bowl of that. We've got uh, chicken and dumplings, I believe is what this is. And then we've also got ham and beans. So I think those would be delicious things that, you know, they can leave out in the sink to thaw and then just heat them up for lunch or dinner and they're ready to go. So I'm gonna pack all of this in a box and I'm gonna get on my way. Um, this is probably a little bit of a long video. And um, like I said, I will post the, the recipes in the description box below and um, for you. Um, but I do appreciate and thank you for coming along with me. Um, I hope this gives you some inspiration and ideas of what you can do uh, in the winter months for, you know, maybe an elderly person who can't get out of the house, somebody who has uh, like a broken leg or an illness or something in their housebound, um, that you can bless them in a way that uh, makes their life easier and, and a lot better during their hardship. So um, thank you for joining me today here at Life on Turkey Lane. Be blessed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye y'all.